It is no secret that Hasbro and Watsi's focus on gameplay has been centered around Commander, and it will come as a shock to absolutely zero of you that they have been releasing product every five weeks for the past three or four years with tons of variants, all sorts of rares, blinged out, the blingification of magic. Now, there will be a day where the attitude of players changes. It is not an if, it is a when. And the question you should ask yourself is, can Watsi and Hasbro pivot from this choice? Stick around, we'll talk about it. So to break it down, I, I wanted to kind of break this into two questions. One, I'm gonna talk about Commander, and then I'm gonna talk about all these variants and everything like that and these, this rapid release cycle. So the Commander end of it all, I've spoken about it a lot on this channel. If you wanna see some of those videos, maybe I'll post the links in the description. Um, but it's, yeah, like I said in the intro, it's no secret that's the focus. Everybody's super hyped up on Commander right now. But I gotta be honest, I in my head, I compare uh, the the hype of Commander to the hype of Battle Royales, you know, in video games. It, you know, a few years back, you know, people were playing Fortnite and, and Call of Duty and Apex Legends, and maybe that's still the case. I haven't played video games in a little bit, but I know, you know, there's a big shift to like Hell Divers and things like that. And, and game modes that people are interested in, they enter cycles, right? Like, People got bored with uh, with um, Battle Royales a few years back, and then they played like Fall Guys for a year. If you remember that game, I don't think people play that anymore. But I feel like Commander's going to be like this. You know, it's it's the it thing now, and it's been the it thing for the past, you know, few years. It, I'm not going to say it's like a flash in the pan thing. It's been a thing for a while. But eventually, if Wizards keeps printing cards that are for Commander and everything like that, it, it kind of... Doesn't it kind of lose the feeling of Commander? Wasn't Commander that thing where you grabbed all your janky cards that you weren't throwing in your standard decks and, you know, made your, you know, 100 card pile and, you know, tried to synergize it as much as you could back when, you know, cards weren't actually printed for this game mode? I, th I think it was just a little bit more fun back then. Now, don't get me wrong. It's great to have, you know, cards specifically for the game you want to play and, like, you feel as a player like you're being focused on. And that's that's an awesome thing. But at the end of the day, the focus of Commander, or the focus of players on Commander, rather, is going to shift to something else. It's not an if, it's a when, you know? It's people get bored, right? It's it's not that they're bored with magic, or maybe it can be for some, but it's, it's just, you know... <laughs> When I was playing Standard when I first started playing Magic, I was so like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm just going to play my, you know, burn deck because I was a red, decks win, red deck wins player. Oh my god, don't hate me. Um, and, you know, I got bored and I wanted to try out like Popper and things like that. So I did and I found a little group who did that. But, you know, players, you know, if you're anything like me, you bounce around between games. And, and some people just want to play Magic for Commander. Some people just want to play Magic for, you know, whatever the competitive scene is that, that day or whatever their LGS is doing. You know what I mean? And that's fine. But when there's such a heavy focus on this, when there's all these legendaries being printed in the sets, that's probably my one gripe with, with Thunder Junction is that there's just so many legendaries. It's, it just, it gets a little, it gets a little cumbersome, right? And, and it really does put players who focus on standard and modern and it makes you know kind of them feel left out of the situation for you know just kind of focusing on what a majority of your players do and don't get me wrong I understand why you do it where you know Hasbro's out there to make money don't get me wrong but there is going to be a day where people shift away from it and do I think they could actually pivot away from this and and really no no harm will be done yeah and I think they're actually already starting to do it it's not like they don't pay attention to what, you know, players are playing with, right? And, and what sort of formats they're playing. Um, those things are being tracked, you know? And and I think we will subtly see those shifts happen. Now, one thing I would like to see is a little bit more separation between commander, you know, actual, like, products and standard sets. I would love to see that happen. I, I hope to see it happen in the next couple of years. My personal prediction is that we're just going to go back to having standard cards and, you know, like maybe, maybe just some random cards and those will be powerful and be put in commander. But I think we are going to see that shift back to 
Commander products, standard products. Um, I don't know when we're going to see it. Obviously, it's going to be past Bloomborough because they've already uh, spoiled the Commander decks there. But I really do think a day will come where that is going to be the focus. And I personally don't think that players will care that much, to be perfectly honest with you. You know, it's the attention span of this, you know, uh, of pretty much everybody nowadays is as long as an Instagram reel. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, me and my wife, our little, like, pastime thing we do, like, at night for, like, 20 minutes is just go through, you know, Instagram reels and send some memes to our friends. But you just, I mean, you, you've probably fallen in the same hole that I have. It's so easy to get sucked in and your attention, you just like more content, more content, more content. And that's what we're going to get into the next thing here about, uh, about the rapid release cycle. And maybe can people be brought out of that? So let's go talk about that now. So I think it's no secret. If you've been on this channel, you know that I do not like collector boxes and all these variants and, you know, everything's rare. So nothing is a kind of mentality that uh, that Hasbro has been, you know, putting into their products. And I think a lot of other people are getting fed up with it, too, to be perfectly honest with you. You know, I, I the amount of times I've been on Twitter and I've seen the six different subsets that are in uh, Thunder Junction being shown and people complaining about it. It's it's off the charts, really. People are fed up with this. And, you know, we know that's because they pretty much took the Aftermath product that they thought would do well. It didn't. And then they kind of booted it and smashed it into the standard standard product. It is what it is. You know, that's that's not going to last long. I don't think we're going to see nearly that many subsets in uh, in like MH3 and Bloomboro and all that. So I'm not too worried about that. So if you if you are worried about that, maybe maybe don't worry as much. I, I really don't think it's going to be that big of an issue in the future. And if I'm wrong, I'll own it. But can Wizards pivot out of this? And I think they already have, right? So you see them, they got rid of my favorite thing in the world, the draft booster box, and they brought in the play booster box, essentially smash, set, and uh, draft together, and hopefully made a decent product that people can play limited with and gives you a booster box feel and a set feel at the same time. Hopefully that is something that will make players very happy, although I don't expect very high sales of it in the interim as, you know, there are tons of draft booster boxes right now that you could get for the $90 price point that are just a couple years old. So I don't expect blowout numbers for that product, but I do ultimately think that that product will do well. And honestly, maybe they might even just drop the word play from it altogether and just go back to calling that the draft booster. That's my little, I guess, little tinfoil hat theory for that. But, uh, but yeah, and these variants, the you know, the invisible links, the uh, dossier, you know, all these, all these certain things, you know, the uh, big score, uh, the vault cards, like there's so many different variants. You open up a booster box and you know, you put your little piles down, your commons, your uncommons, your rares. Now you open up a, a collector booster box and you fill up the whole play mat because you don't know what the hell is what. It's, it's exhausting. Players are getting tired of it. Collectors even are probably getting tired of it. I'm, I'm getting a little tired of it. Uh, but ultimately, I do think they are slowly working it out of the system. Um, and I do think it's going to be past Bloomborough where we see some major shifts here. But I do think it'll ultimately be the way they go in the future. You know, there's really not a sustainable way to keep going with these variants. Like, what happens? So now, uh, if you keep going in this path, every slot in a booster pack in a collector booster box will be a different variant. And what happens when you reach 15 variants in a booster pack? Does it just, what, do you, do you add a 16th card? No. So what are you going to do? Is it, you know, are we just going to go to the next, you know, uh, rung on the ladder and do artist signed cards? Are we going to do even more versions of serialized cards? You know, it's, it's a slippery slope, but also... The people that are running Hasbro, you might think they're dumb and everything like that. And maybe they are. But, you know, they're, they're obviously business people. They know what they're doing to a certain a certain aspect, at least in terms of monetizing something. And to be perfectly honest with you, if they can't do it, Hasbro, you know, they're just going to get fired. And they're, they're going to find somebody else who can run the company better. So ultimately, I do think 
that Wizards is and Hasbro is going to find a way to pivot. It might not be the way you think right away, and it might not happen tomorrow. Rem remember, Wizards thinks sets and sets ahead. So what we see in Bloomboro, it kind of looks pretty much like everything we have, right? It has the Commander decks, has the Collector Booster, everything like that. It's probably going to have some variants too. But what about the sets that haven't been spoiled that already are on their mind? Are they going to do a little bit of a flip or a, or a, a switch back to maybe how Magic used to be? Who knows? But... Wizards has already lowered print runs, you could tell. They're switching the way they're selling by going direct to Amazon. They're trying to find a way to keep the money they're making high while also keeping the print run lower. So they're making smart business moves. Whether you like that for the LGS or anything else, that's that's a different nuanced conversation. But they are keeping their their revenue high, or at least where it needs to be. Now, the question is, Will players actually buy these products if there's less variance? And I really do think they will, as long as the product is good. That's all they need to do is make a good product. Now, I think a lot of people have an, have an opinion on what a good product is. I have my opinions on what a good product is. You know, I know, I know a lot of people don't agree with my opinions on things, but... The set needs the sets need to be flavorful, the art needs to be good, and there needs to be good playable cards in the set. And that is all you need to make a set good. I, I'm I'm fully convinced of that. If if you show me Ixalan, right? I mean now mind you, Ixalan has variants and everything, but that but not nearly as much as the other ones, and it's doing fine. No serialized cards, just simple lottery cards in the Jurassic World set that we've seen in like, you know, Battle for Zen and and, and uh uh, in Oath, oh, Oath of the Gatewatch? Is that what it is? Yeah, Oath of the Gatewatch. Um, you know, and, and mind you, those sets weren't the greatest in the world. But at the same time, the lottery cards provided some hype, provided a little bit of FOMO. And those things are okay to have in moderation, right? I liked that the, that the Mana Vault was there. I didn't like it for like the FOMO effect, but I did like the chance of getting something in a bonus slot on top of buying artwork that you liked. You know, it's not bad to have bonus things in these sets. Some people may convince you otherwise, but I really don't think it's a bad thing. So ultimately, yeah, I do think Wizards could pivot out of these issues. And maybe they're not issues now, but they will become an issue at some point. Players move on. P people's attention span is low. So we have to, well, we, Hasbro has to find a way to guide that and, and, <laughs> and I hate to say it like this, but predict people's attitude years in the future. They have to find a way to better do that. So I guess that's what I have to say on that. Uh, my name's Alex, uh, Greatest Moose. If you guys enjoyed the content, I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribed. I upload daily, you know, take a day off on the weekends for me. But um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Everybody stopping by on our way to 250 subscribers already. I feel like I was just thanking you guys for 150 and 200, but here we are. Um, and yeah, I just, I really enjoy making this content. I hope you enjoy the steps I've, I've taken to uh, up the production. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Don't forget to like or dislike, always helps. Leave a comment, tell me what you think about this. It's important. I want to know your opinion, seriously. So let me know in the comments. Have a good day. Thank you so much for dropping by.